You think you just fell out of a coconut tree? We need you to be Mamala of the country. <laughs> Mother has arrived. Yeah, well, this could well be the first presidential election in history that involves coconuts and 360 mashups. And suddenly this week, a surge of the youngest voters plugged in and turned out. Is that a sign? They do have the numbers. Will they make that matter? We take that to today's Next Gen Roundtable. Carlton Gillespie with us, a news intern at WLRN. He's also a journalism student at FIU and Roundtable veteran. Lara Lynn Jackson is a multimedia journalist who recently graduated from the University of Miami. Liv Caputo is the Florida Capitol reporter for the Floridian Press, based in Tallahassee, right? Mm -hmm. And long drive here just for us today. So we're very excited to have you. Thank you so much for being here. All right, uh, this, who gets the first question here? Well, if you drove all the way, you might as well. You drove all the way. <laughs> all right, let's hear it. So, okay, everyone's on TikTok, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that a really yes. silly question anyway? Okay, so <laughs> this Biden is out. Harris is presumptively in. All of a sudden, she's on TikTok. She's the young, cool person who's going to be 60. Yeah. I mean, it sort of explain, explain what is happening here. Uh, well, I think they're calling it the Kamala phenomenon. I believe I said that correctly. <laughs> uh, there's that, there's Project Coconut, and I think Bratz for Kamala. It's become this, whether, whether or not you like it, uh, TikTok is one of the most popular apps uh, oh, for Gen Z. Yeah. You know? And so we're seeing a lot of these trends, Bratz for Kamala, all of these things. But why, why now? Because uh, I'll just go out on and say, President Biden has had some moments that are very TikTokable. I mean, <laughs> right? Am I right? Am I wrong? Well, why now? Why this? Because I think the, as far as Biden goes, there was not a lot of enthusiasm for him, you know. And now we're seeing somebody who's young, quote unquote, who's I love over there. Who's going to be sixty at her next birthday? <laughs> so yeah. loving that. And I would say that's the reason we're seeing this explosion. Yeah, and I think I think what's like what's really kind of, you know, the young people have kind of been waiting to exhale. Because for years, even in the 2016 election, it felt like uh, you know, they were on the defensive. They were defending against Donald Trump. In 2020, it was maybe not a vote for Joe Biden, but a vote to prevent Donald Trump. And now you have a candidate who can go on the offense. And it's finally you know, supporting someone that can be a little more offensive in their strategy than reactive and defensive. All right, so you're talking about people in your voting de demographic as being Democrats, or at least not Trump voters. Well, there me... certainly are Trump voters in our oh, demographic, 100%. but I think I think socially and I think um, even economically, socially, there's a lot of positions that are more left in, in the younger generation. And I think young people have traditionally voted left in, you know, for a long time. So y you all are kind of plugged in as news, so I'm gonna call you news people because you've all been in the news business, right? right? A little bit and news people are just plugged in people. Lara Lynn, are you, have you exhaled? Is this, is this an <laughs> exhale moment for you? Yeah, you know, um, I'm very excited because Kamala represents such a big community and a lot of Gen Z can see, we can see ourselves in her. She is an AKA, she is a part of so a, many a different- sorority, A sorority, yes, black sorority, yes, AKA. Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. And you know, so many young black women can see themselves in her. Not just that, it, she reaches so such a broad audience and she's very personable. And I think this is how she created her big viral moment. It's not just about coconut trees and her making jokes and people making fan edits of her. It's just, she makes herself one of us. And I think that's why she caught that rapid fire attention. And that, that's very interesting because you're talking about a vibe. Yeah. There's nothing about <laughs> policy in, in what you just all said. Right. Right? Right. So what do you think policy wise, does that, does that matter? Of course policies matter, you know, but I think if we're talking about youth voters who are on TikTok and on social media, if that's their, it, if that's their exposure to, to Kamala, I don't know how much that social media translates into, okay, are we actively searching out what her policies are? Mm -hmm. Are we comparing them to what Donald Trump's are? You know, I don't know how much that translates. So yes, I'm sure people who are very engaged in politics, young voters who are, I'm sure that they, they love Kamala's policies, but I, I don't know if we can use TikTok as a metric to measure the love of Kamala's policies. And can we use TikTok as a metric of en engagement? Oh, absolutely. Yes. I mean, yeah. I think, you know, we've talked about Kamala on TikTok and you said Joe Biden had TikTokable moments. Well, I guarantee you they were on there 
in, in a negative light, right? There was compilations of him struggling to get up the stairs or stumbling or sometimes even altered videos of him stumbling. And I think as far as you said, maybe policy is not really TikTok's strength, but vibes certainly are. Yeah. And to think that vibes won't have an impact in the election is, uh, I think we've, we've crossed the Rubicon on that many years ago. Oh, you know who is the best vibe actor of all? Is Donald Trump. Donald Trump, right, of course. Oh, he, he's got that down pat. Exactly. Right, and you know, all you have to do is go to a, a Trump rally and, and see how he, he does it well. Yeah. 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 So let's talk about age as a factor because we had two older men who were running and your demographic, I don't, I don't want to make this a, you know, a generational thing, but there is definitely a demographic here that we're talking about. It was just uninspired mm -hmm. by two old, and I heard the age, two older men. So now we have uh, that same older man mm -hmm. and a younger woman, although about to be 60. Is age the number of factor? I think for sure. She's, like I was mentioning before, she's more relatable. And I think the people in her team have to be a part of Gen Z, have mm -hmm. to be millennials, because they're doing an excellent job on her TikTok and her social. <laughs> her, like, she didn't even post one video. How do you know she doesn't do it herself? She's that vibes, <laughs> as we were vibes, speaking. Yeah. Yeah. So. It's not just about the silk presses and the laughs, and it's also the interviews with Kiki Palmer. She's a very mm. big uh, figure in with Gen Z. But I also think that we were speaking earlier. I think that misinformation can spread just as fast. Yeah, I, I was. You know, you read my mind. <laughs> uh, we shouldn't talk about that. Mm. Yeah, it yeah. can spread like wildfire, and you know, unfortunately, our generation doesn't really go the extra mile to go on Google. The comment section. Ni say, neither does mine. Don't feel bad. There's a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, no, we're there. But yeah. that's a that's a really interesting question because misinformation. You know, I don't want to pin it on TikTok because you have it on X and you have it on Facebook and you have it in the streets. Mm -hmm. How do you? You know, social media, how do you get by that misinformation, especially now that so many people are riveted on social media? Well, it's funny because uh, in a way, it's not done, right? It has to be either served to you in an algorithm. If, if someone's not going the extra mile to fact check something, the facts aren't going to magically appear for them. So they can either try and corroborate it in multiple places, or they can just keep getting served whatever whatever is popular. And whatever's popular in an algorithm is something that either draws your attention or makes you angry or, or keeps your eyes on the screen. Do you think people realize that they are being fed an, al an algorithm? Oh, 100%. They have to. Yeah. There's yeah. no way that they don't know. They're in an echo chamber? I think young people certainly yeah. are much yeah. more aware of it. Um, I think I think it's it's kind of meta referenced in a lot of you know people will say oh my I can't believe my algorithm is absolutely serving today <laughs> right or or something like something to that effect so I think yeah I think young people are certainly much more aware of it um, can't speak for older generations but um, judging on how misinformation spreads it's it's clear that at least young people are at least aware that there is something pushing them content what do you think about social media misinformation. I, I, what you just said made me realize the younger people who are who have grown up on social media, to your point, are probably understand that there is misinformation more than anybody. Yeah, um, as well as on the contrary, uh, if you're going to engage a lot with who you think you would be voting for, you're not really going to see the opposing viewpoint. You're not necessarily going to engage much or even see videos that would support the other side. So TikTok is not necessarily impartial. So I think it's important to go the extra mile, do your own research, hear both sides, inform yourself to get a holistic view um, before you place in your vote. Well, to that point, I think a lot of people who are on very far right or far left sides of TikTok, I don't think they necessarily, can't, they know there's an algorithm. They know there's something, you know, putting out what they want to see and they like it. You know, they're like, all right, great. My For You page is great today. I love it. So I think people who are already in those mindsets, they don't want to hear views that are different than theirs. They don't really, they see what they like and they like it and they go off of that. Really? Because I think that's like the whole concept of what we do here is, mm -hmm. I, I think I sometimes learn the most from people I don't think I agree with. And then I think, wow, you know, that's a really interesting point of perspective. Right. And, and you can do that on social media, but you, you have to work for it. You can, and I think yeah. you also have to contend with, and, and we mentioned this earlier in uh, pre-show, but mm -hmm. we were talking about, you know, sometimes there are actors who will build backwards from a premise. Instead of taking in the facts and forming an opinion, they will reach a conclusion and work backwards. And you have so many tools on social media to help you craft a narrative or a persona that gets across whatever your your idea is without having to consider facts because I think even if you take as many steps as you can, and I think young people, like we said, are certainly more equipped to kind of deal 
with, uh, with misinformation. It's, it's like beach erosion. You know, nature will win out. The, the forces of misinformation are, are constant and ever threatening. And as much bulwark as you put up there, it, it, it can slowly chip away over time. Carlton's like the master of metaphor today. <laughs> <laughs> kind of it's beautiful. Dangerous. So I want to give me give me like a little round robin here of voting, Gen X voting. What 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 worries you? What do you? What's your issue? You said of Gen or Gen Z voting. Gen Z for, voting. Uh, yeah. What <laughs> what worries me? It's like Gen you X. Uh oh. Um, for Gen Z voting, what worries me? I think I mean we've been talking about it a lot, but um, social media, of course. But that's for all generations, really. Like a lot of people don't really seek out um, both sides as they should, as I said earlier. What also worries me is um, political extremism on both sides that is pushed through via social media. That echo chamber. Yes, the echo chamber. You have that with the very far right MAGA. You have it on the far left, with which is becoming, um, it's becoming blue MAGA, I believe, is mm. what they're calling it. Mm -hmm. So you have the blue MAGA. I, I had not heard that you yet. Have it, so it's kind of the same mentality of this blind loyalty to whoever it may be. So, for example, when people wanted Biden to step down. There were people on the very far left who said, that's disloyal, you know, this is traitorous to our party. What are you doing without allowing room for discussion? You see it recently in up in DC with some of the very far left um, pro-Palestine supporters who have kind of evolved into a pro-Hamas uh, support. So you see this blind loyalty that started in around 2016 with Trump and now we have it here in 2024 with the very far left who say, we're not gonna vote for Harris because she's funding a genocide or we're not gonna vote for Harris because she was affiliated with Biden and Biden hasn't really been doing anything. So that's what concerns me. I, I think that's like really astute. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, because I, we talk about that in the news business, we talk about that all the time, mm -hmm. but, but you crystallize that out there on the streets people start with a narrative and find things to bolster their narrative mm -hmm. to the exclusion of all else. What worries you? Well, I think that the presidential election is very important. Very, it's big, it's, we need to vote regardless. I think that voting for your congressman is just as important. Voting for or your woman. mayor is mm. just as important. Yes, <laughs> our congresswoman is just as important. Um, Do you think people are not plugged in enough? I, exactly, I think that's the issue and that's what worries me about Gen Z because they're just as important and voting locally is what will like this will cause the change that you will see directly and faster change and see how you can go to maybe a town hall and voice your opinion and see who's listening see who cares and so i think that that's what worries me most about my generation are you voting for everyone mm -hmm. or are you just voting presidentially which is just it's just, all of them are important but are you tapped into all of your voting so maybe the uh, the, the local candidates need that vibe somehow <laughs> to get people plugged in. What, what are your issues? Well, and I think it's a good point, especially especially now, right? Voting locally in Miami-Dade and in Broward. Broward's going to vote for a tax collector for the first time ever. Mm -hmm. I've spoken to, to multiple of the candidates, and my first question is, do people know that this is happening? Right. Do people even know and that they the have answer? to vote? No. No, it, he says it's a shock every time mm -hmm. you have to you have to see someone. And, and in Miami Dade, there's five positions that will drastically impact the way that governor, government is administrated. And right. I especially, I think, you know, maybe most people wouldn't know, but especially young people aren't plugged in. We're so, so hyper focused. So where where, on where big do elections. you plug in? Because we talk about that all the time. Well, well, not right. all the time, well, but we talk about that a lot. Yeah, you mentioned yeah. we're news people, right? We have yeah. to be plugged in. Yeah. Um, we have to know this. To be fair, I didn't know about this until I met. Um, one of the members running for tax collector, you know, sometime last year, um, and I thought, oh, well, that I should know that. <laughs> you know, that's in the in the county I live in. And, and not only that, but know about the people who are going to be doing that job, mm -hmm. and and that's and the ballots are out there right now. So, yeah, that's, and you know, Gen Z has the numbers. If every Gen Z got out and voted, you, you get what you want. Yeah. yeah. Liv Caputo, Laralyn Jackson, Carlton Gillespie, you rock totally. I'm so happy you're here today. And please do come back because I love your insights and your perspective. Oh, thank you and so get, much. And get everybody you know to get out and engage, right? For sure. Thank you. For sure. Thank you so much. Yay.